Draft Roth in the care again, and this is part three for the 2019 NFL Draft for the wide receiver position. Now, let's just get straight into it. J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, Stanford. I like him. I like him. He's a solid, he's a solid guy. Not a number one in my book. And if you actually looked at my first two uh, videos that I've done, um, a lot of those guys, like, in part one where I talked about DK, Marquise, Hakeem Butler, A.J. Brown, and Antoine Wesley, all of those guys can be number ones. Even in part two, a Calvin Harmon, a Nikhil Harry, a Paris Campbell, a Miles Boykin, and a Preston Williams, they could all be number ones for a team. Part three, none of these guys can be number ones. Not to say that they can't, they can't be number ones straight up, but they don't really have what we consider the skill set to be number one receivers in the NFL. Um, and with, with Whiteside, I like him, but I'm not his biggest fan. Uh, I think that he's a solid route runner, but he doesn't sell his routes good enough. Um, I think a lot of times he does a little bit too much when he's trying to run routes. And he kind of tips his hand a little bit, um, which forces him not to get separation in any NFL. Those catches that he does make, he may not get those type of catches. He's definitely a hands catcher, and he catches pretty much anything that really touches his hands. But uh, And he tracks the ball really, really well. But separation is going to be a big key. You're wondering, he can either turn out to be a Laquan Treadwell or a DeAndre Hopkins. Who knows, but we'll see when he gets there. On the next person on this list is Riley Ridley. Riley Ridley, Ridley from Georgia. I like Riley Ridley, you know, a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount. He's very physical, very tough, good hand speed, route running ability, and he has the yards after catch. Um, the only thing, the only thing I said he had good speed, but the only thing that's the one thing that he kind of lacks on just a little bit. Um, and the forty yard dash kind of told me a little bit, and I don't try to put too much stock in it. Uh, I think that he probably is faster on the field than that 40-yard dash would say. But it does explain some stuff a lot. You don't see him uh, running past receivers on go routes or fly routes and stuff like that. You kind of see him, you know, just having good routes uh, and being able to get enough separation to make, make the catch. And then on top of that, with that separation, once he makes that catch, he's breaking tackles and he's getting extra yards. I love how tough he is. And when he comes off the line of scrimmage, the way that he – he chops hands downs and he's just able to really push it and stuff like that. I just love the way that he kind of gets off the press and the tough and the toughness and physicality that he brings to that wide receiver position. Like I say, he's not a guy that I will put up there as a uh, number one receiver in particularly, but I do like him enough to say that uh, he is a good solid receiver that will uh, make some plays within the NFL. Next on the list, we're going to talk about Jamal Custis from Syracuse. Um, height, weight, speed guy with solid hands and route running. Um, not the not the greatest type of receiver you see. Um, he kind of actually remind me a little bit of what I had already saw in last year's prospect, um, Stephen Ishmael. He kind of remind and they you know they're from the same team. They're kind of the same player. You know you got guys they they run so, they run okay routes. They got pretty solid hands, but they're not. With but both those type of him him and Custis. Uh, they're just not like, I don't know. It's just something about the way that they play the game. You want to see more of a bigger impact. They make big plays, but it's one of those things that you want to see them, you know, fight a little bit more for extra yards. You want to see them get a little bit more separation. You just want to see just a little bit more. He's just, he's one of those guys where he's a jack of all trades, master of none. Where he's good at pretty much kind of everything for the receiver position, but he's not exceptional or great at, at any of the stuff like you can be good at all of the everything but then have great speed and you could put yourself you know you can really elevate yourself but when you're just good at just everything it doesn't really you're okay or good it doesn't really give you much to really work with once you get into the nfl because then when you get there you're going to you're going to need to work even harder to at least excel at one of those type of uh things whether it's your your route running your hands your yards after catch or the way that you track the ball so that's when it comes to jamal custis that's why i would put him as a number one type receiver but a guy that he couldn't be a number three he has to be a number two within the nfl then looking at more, Stanley Morgan Jr. from Nebraska, 
good solid receiver. Um, I like a lot of different things that Stanley Morgan actually brings to the table. Uh, he's a good route runner, good yards at the catch. Uh, you know, tracks the ball fairly well, uh, solid speed, not great speed, uh, but he brings some stuff to the to Nebraska team, and he can bring some stuff to the NFL that can be huge for him. Um, being able to make certain plays here and there, being able to uh, be that kind of big playmaker that you're not going to see a lot when it comes to, not say Nebraska's a small school, but they're not known for pushing out receivers and offensive weapons. Stanley Morgan Jr. is that type of guy that, he could be more within the NFL than he was in college, but um, from what I saw on tape, there's nothing that really stands out where he's not where just like a Jamal Custis, he's not really he's not really great at anything. Maybe except for uh, his yards after catch, but even the even then, it's a little inconsistent because then he could he could get tackled and brought down really really fast as well. He doesn't there's you know there's physicality, but is his body made up to be more physical than what it already is? It's not like what you would get from a, a DK Metcalf that can break some tackles or a Hakeem Butler that can break some tackles and stretch the ball out and get the first down or Riley Ridley that can do it. That's they're all over 200 pounds. Stanley Morgan is kind of like just under that uh that 200 pound mark or he's right at that 200-pound mark, and you just want to see a little bit more when it comes to a guy like Stanley Morgan Jr., just a little bit. And last but not least, we're going to talk about Andy Isabella. Um, I'm not going to waste my time too much on Andy, but Andy is a guy that, uh, you know, he's a, he's, he's a very, very fast receiver. He doesn't have the... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. He doesn't have the greatest route running skills or anything like that. He's kind of just one of those one of those white guy receivers that will play in the slot. And um, he's going to be really fast and he's going to you know make plays here and there and everything. Um, but to think he's going to be like a, a, a number one receiver in the NFL? No, I see him as a slot receiver and I can see him as a really really good slot receiver. And I hate to say this because you look at guys like Julian Edelman and you look at a Wes Welker and you look at a Cole Beasley and you kind of look at Andy and you say, well, that's the same thing. The biggest thing that Andy is going to give you more than those guys is that great speed. So that's the one thing that he's going to carry over into the NFL. Hopefully, he doesn't use his speed to really comp to really like push with his route running skills. Hopefully, he learns how to run uh, really really good crisp routes because once he gets that ball in his hand, he's going to be gone. So if he learns how to do that, he can actually be what you consider like a number one receiver, similar to what Victor Cruz was for the New York Giants, where he was their number one guy, but he was a slot receiver. So maybe he can become that. It will be huge for him. If he does become that, but his it's some stuff that he needs to work on, but he can still be a really, really good playmaker when he comes to the NFL. So that's it, folks. That was part three of the 2019, uh, wide, the wide receivers prospects of the 2019 NFL draft. I thank all of you guys for watching. Please comment. Please rate. Please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell. I'm going to be doing this for every single position in the NFL, quarterback, running back, just every everything. And I'm the type of dude I talk about all teams within the NFL. So please check me out if this is your first time watching. Like I said, I made part one and part two that's already up where I talk about a lot of the uh, some other receivers like Marquise Brown, DK Metcalf, Calvin Harmon, Hakeem Butler, Antoine Wesley, AJ Brown, Nikhil Harry, uh Miles Boykin, uh Paris Campbell, and Preston Williams from Colorado State. Like I talk about a lot of these other guys, so please check out those videos and see what I have to say about them. Like I said, I really study these study these receivers and I put my heart into doing this scouting for me and also for you that's watching it on YouTube. So thank you for watching. Once again, this is Draft for Authentic. Goodbye.